So continuing from the business model canvas into the validation uh, part. So now when we have built uh, initial versions out of all of these different uh, angles and aspects, then how do we basically uh, move forward from, from there? And as you can imagine, these are both parallel activities, but now just for the sake of the, the going through these tools, we, we, we go in this, this order. But once you start to use these tools, the point is that you uh, use all of those and go and create versions and updates, uh, and you document uh, the next version with your learnings, but you should also document the rationale, aka the learnings themselves somewhere uh, along the way as well because all of this material eventually is also the part uh, that you uh, convince your investors and you convince your partners uh, because they see this process as extremely valuable and they also see that if you don't have anything documented and you haven't done this process they know you are most more likely to fail uh, than if, if when you have done this effort regardless of whether you have hit the validation or not. So if you're running a business that is successful by random luck or activity, but you actually don't know why it is working that well, you will have difficulty um, building the organization to run with that business opportunity because you don't know why it works. So product market fit. So now we are going to to seek, continue seeking from that, we have the, the value proposition canvas. We have the first version or couple of variations in prioritized order. We have um, the business model canvas to consider the whole business partnerships, the kind of our landscape and our business in context of that, that landscape. And uh, now we look at then what is the defined market. We revisit uh, the vision and the mission and uh, uh, the business or the company DNA canvas where we had more of the, 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 the bigger, bigger playground and then looking at our own business and business model in that playground. And because only us as creators of the startup can define what success means, it also means that we have to define what are the measures that we are benchmarking ourselves, are we making progress, are we being successful? Because success to you and your company is what you define it is. It's not an external, some person saying, you should do this or you should do that, or this is your target. They may give you advice, but it's your decision what you want your business to, to become. And that's why it starts from why does your company need to exist from there. You, you define your targets. But if you don't have these targets, then yourself, you are lost to consider, are you making good progress? Have you actually uh, find this fit? So to, to do this work, you need those measures and KPIs in place as well, so that you can then do your validation. And that's when you, when you see those numbers come together, that you are hitting certain conversion rates, you are hitting certain number of customers, you are hitting those with a certain level of, of uh, rev, uh, resource use, uh, you are hitting those with the partnerships in place, then you start to find fit in, 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 in bits and pieces around uh, the whole business. And that's what the startup is, in search for repeatable, scalable business model um, that's, that's, the, that's the job of a startup, but you define what that success is. It's not someone else external. But once you have enough fit uh, in, your, in your model and you can prove that, you can showcase that uh, through your numbers, uh, then you're ready to move to scale. But before you have this, before you have that fit, do not move to scale. Don't worry about the, 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 what we have in the, in the scaling phase or growth phase in the module four, stay in this mode. But if you all, all also, when you are doing this, um, uh, you basically also validate 
that the, the, the team may not be able to execute, then, then basically you have to also uh, revisit those thoughts. But you don't need to worry too much about the things that you did in the formation phase, unless the validation for, the, for those things that you did on the formation phase starts to, to, to resonate that actually things are not as solid as, as, as we need them to be at this point. So the aspect of, of success we covered, so then the part, uh, the consideration that was also in the formation ways is the, is, uh, is the market timing. Always keep that in the horizon, uh, but don't worry too much about the window of opportunity. Uh, the window of opportunity is, is always there, but you just need different strategies to apply to that. And of course, there are certain uh, things that uh, at least seem that they are extremely now only there. But oftentimes, if they are really big opportunities, there's also a tons and tons of competition coming with different resources. So you anyway need to uh, find your unique way to be competing them with all of those same that look at the same opportunity. So let's say the opportunity when Apple launched the App Store the first time to develop the first apps was a big window of opportunity, but it also got a lot of attention and competition quickly. But of course, if you were successful in the early phase, the whole volume kept pushing you higher because those that were successful applications in the beginning remain on the top list for quite some time and get a good ride out of that. If we take some regular retains like uh, in EU now the GDPR that happened last year or in financial sector some of like PSD2, these are all windows of opportunity but they're very slowly moving markets so there isn't no some things that happened with that opportunity. Most took those regulatory changes as pain for the existing companies uh, where actually the, the, the regulator had to push these stale organizational markets to start becoming more innovative because the actors themselves were not renewing the market uh, or improving it. <clears throat> so con context of, of uh, market timing and take that into consideration. And the challenge with, with this is that is, is why it is so difficult and sometimes in context of validation is that, um, that for example, uh, case Nokia uh, is, is, is that they made a lot of validations in real markets for touchscreen phone, for game phones, for music phones. And they basically validate it in the real markets with real customers and users that users don't want them. The numbers show that users don't appreciate this. So when the iPhone came out, they were looking at, well, it's a music phone, it's a, it's a touchscreen phone, doesn't have a physical keyboard, and nobody's gonna want that. We have tested that in the market. But how wrong were they? So it was just better made product, more complete with more mature technology and of course coming out from uh, an organization that wasn't making a phone. They were making something totally different and, and they managed to, to capture capture that. that and and, and uh, so in, in context of that, uh, these are very tricky things, these, these uh, validations also. If you validate in the market and you are too early for the market timing, you will also get wrong signals. And, but then, and these are the types of things that uh, you only learn more with experience and so seek for those who may have that experience if you don't have them to help you get visibility to, to this. But even for them that is very difficult. And sometimes those who work in the industry are the worst ones to give feedback of what's going to change in their industry because you, it's hard to identify which one inside that industry are those who are holding on to the past and which ones are those who are looking at the future. So the, the typical market timing development visualized looks like this, that there is this, if we think the window of opportunity, this is the shape, but it's very difficult to say how this shape, how quickly this happens in context of 
different opportunities. Uh, but this is the, the, the initially there is this typically longer than expected time period when when things start to happen and they start to come visible. But the actual real markets, the consumers or the customer segments are not yet responding and chopping on board in volumes. You may still get the business growing, but it may look like also that there's not really money to be made uh, or, or, or it's not big enough and so forth. But then something changes or so it, it, it crosses that crucial volume, certain network effect starts to play, whatever that may be that drives the tipping point. And then, and then suddenly it starts to move really fast. And, uh, and now the question is like, in what time window are you in context of this with your product and with your market? But remember, the game is never over. So if you are building a significant company uh, or if that's your target, these opportunities come and go. So there's always new opportunities with new products. There's always new timings. There's parallel timings happening at the same time, always new tipping points coming. So Facebook for sure is not going to be the final version of a social network. It may be even that Facebook is not the one who's going to make the next successful social network because they, are, they may not ever be able to convert themselves out of the data issue that they are now with the users. For, as an example, or some other reason, uh, Amazon, Jeff Bezos have said himself that he don't believe that Amazon will survive forever, that Amazon will also die at some point. So it's just the game is never over in business. So your thinking as a startup or anything in context of building startups is to identify who is playing what kind of game. So not all startups have the same success goal, not all startups have the same targets. Some are trying to build significant companies. Some are trying to build those unicorns fast. Some are trying to never build unicorns, but eventually they may become one. Some are just trying to do one feature product and try to get quick exit for, you know, 500,000 or 1 million or 10 million. Uh, and that's all they're looking after to, to do. The key is that everyone in that team should be driving for that same outcome. It's a problem if someone is considering building a, a lasting big company and someone is working on one million exit. So it's 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 that's why it's important these these factors.